Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Repco Home Finance Q3 FI23 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Yes Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajiv Mehta from Yes Securities. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Renju. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thank you for joining the Repco Home Finance's Q3 FI23 earnings call. Firstly, I would like to thank uh, the management for giving us this opportunity to host them. Uh, we have with us the entire top management team, Mr. Swami Nathan, MD and CEO, Mr. T. Karunakaran, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. N. Balasubramaniam, Chief Development Officer, Ms. Poonam Sen, Chief General Manager, Ms. K. Lakshmi, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Subramaniam Balagan, the Deputy General Manager. Now, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Swami Nathan for his opening remarks on the company's performance, post which he will open the floor for questions. Over to you, Swami Nathan, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rajiv. And welcome to the Repco Home Finance Earnings Conference call for this quarter, this December quarter, and for the nine months ended December 31, 2022. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you for joining our conference call today. First, I would like to recall the priorities of the current year, namely bringing back book growth momentum and bringing asset quality under control for this company. Not missing some challenges, nine months hence, I'm happy to announce that we have carried the momentum gained in the pre previous quarters forward. In addition to the business momentum, we had also planned to bring positive changes in business processes, systems during the current year, so that the next year onwards, the company will be able to take leverage of the base. We are happy to announce that so as we speak, the company's branch level operations have totally moved to a new IT platform. The migration process started from the third quarter and will stabilize by this quarter end. Because of some disruptions because of the IT <coughs> changes, there was there was an impact of about 50 crores in our disbursement approximately. Considering this point, as well as the Q3 being a seasonally weak quarter, we think the disbursement run rate remained resilient in brief when compared to sequentially. I have data for about six, seven years for this company. In all seven years, except for one year, the December quarter's performance of 750 crores disbursement is one of the highest, is the highest for the uh, yes, 696 crores is uh, the highest for this co company. We have set up a small team at HO to track the customers who have applied for a loan elsewhere so that the DT outs are being monitored. Despite that, we are happy that we are able to increase our AEM by around 2% this quarter. We should also mention that there was a subsidy repayment, a CLS subsidy from our NHV that has also contributed to a small decline in our AEM. Notwithstanding these issues, the loan sanctions and disbursements recorded a robust year-on-year -year growth. Loan sanctions increased 51% year-on-year to 145 crores from 495 crores in Q3. Disbursements increased 57% in the same period to 696 crores as compared to 444 crores in Q3 FI3. Starting July 22 until January 23 in seven months, we have taken a rate hike of 110 basis points on our starting ROI. We call it as MLR. As a result, the average yield on loan sanctions rose about 70 basis points from June to 10.7%. We reported loan spreads and margins of 3.3% and 4.8% during Q3, above our gated levels of 3% and 4.3% respectively. We will continue to monitor the movement in our cost of borrowings and try to pass on the change if any to our customers, as well as we will have a good control on our other costs. The profit grew 14% sequentially to 80.8 crores, driven by stable margin and lower credit costs. We earned a ROI of 2.7%, as against 2.4% in Q2, and an ROE of 14.7%, as against 13.3% in Q2. 
we attribute improvement in profitability ratios to our relentless recovery efforts and strong risk based pricing. The gross non performing assets GNPS declined 36 basis points sequentially to 6.15%. The net NPA fell about 40 basis points and now stands at 3.4%. The GNPA section coverage ratio registered a 3% sequential improvement to 46%. ECL provisions remained stable at 4.2% of the loan book. The balance between our exposure to the self-employed and the salary segment stood at 50.9% and 49.1% respectively. The share of non working loans, that is less, stood about 20.1% of the loan book. Our distribution network at 185 comprising of 160 branches and 25 satellite centers. The liquidity position has remained comfortable as we carried out around 300 crores in cash and cash equivalents. In addition, we had 1,400 crores of unutilized lines of credit from banks and NHP. I will summarize the key financial highlights for the nine months ended December 22 before opening the floor for question and answer. The loan book stood at 12,156 crores registering about 3.5% year-on-year growth. Fact for the nine months surged 43%, 214 crores. ROA and ROE stood at 2.4% and 13.3% respectively. The core profitability has remained strong with the solid spreads and margins of 3.4% and 4.8% respectively. And the gross NPA stood at 6.15%, with a coverage ratio of 46%. Thanks to all of you for joining this call. I'll be happy, along with our team, to answer all your questions. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, We'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Amit Mahandali from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, what do you expect the loan book uh, growth to be for uh, next year, FI24 and 25? Okay. Is that all? Sorry? So I was looking for loan book growth uh, for next couple of years. See, interestingly, we are planning to grow around 25 percent in our disbursement next year. That is 24-25, and a 15 percent AEM growth. This is rather intuitive. We have informed our board. Uh, basically, once this is approved, more or less we will be announcing in the next conference call. But tentatively, uh, 15 for next year. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, sir, uh, I mean, with regard to disbursements, right, uh, the disbursements are growing at a healthy rate, but it looks like, you know, the repayment ratio continues to remain uh, significantly high and also maybe the BT outs are also higher. Uh, I mean, if you, you know, just to quote your numbers, right, the disbursement and EVM growths are not in sync. So is there a, like a management level strategy uh, to tackle this, uh, you know, issue? Let, uh, let us admit, sir, uh, because we are in a competitive in environment and that too, our spread is being 3% and we are competing with the best in the industry, some VT outflow is totally inevitable. Okay. Despite that, we are taking some measures to contain this VT outflow growth. We have tied up with some agencies to give us some inputs about likely or likely customers who are likely to opt out. And we are trying to contact these customers to prevent such VT outflows. Second, we plan to increase our disbursements as much as possible, including at uh, see, I was just telling you next year we plan to increase just thirty five percent. That itself will be a good growth. So your BT outflow, notwithstanding a BT outflow, we will still be able to manage a book growth uh, in area. Okay, that's it from my end. Thanks. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Venkat Raja, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, congrats to the team, to the Repco team for the Tata Club Q3 performance. It's a beautiful uh, turnaround on all parameters. Uh, excuse me. Uh, are you, uh, am I audible, sir? 
not not much. Uh, can you be a little more clear? Yeah. First of all, congrats to Repco team for the spectacular Q3 performance and its uh, all around uh, improvement in all the parameters. Okay, as a retail investor, uh, I have some concerns. See, in spite of spectacular performance, the stock price is not reflecting that at all. Okay, if the entire market or entire sector or entire industry is like that, uh, we will not uh, have so much concern. But only Repco is being depressed so much in the market. Okay. Compared to, I am not even comparing with the uh, new age uh, housing finance companies where there is no problem of old uh, uh, legacy problems. Whereas I am comparing only with the LIC uh, housing finance or India Wolf or uh, GH housing finance or PNB or Canfin homes. Compared to all these companies, only Repco is paying at very low PRE or even very low adjustable uh, price per book value. So my request to you is, okay, even though it is not in your control, can you please appraise FIA or uh, domestic institutes or HNI uh, and onboard them so that uh, the share, share price will be stable going forward? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Venkatesh, for your compliments. As you were uh, all stated, see, we are not here to monitor the movement and all, to, and we are not there. And we are definitely confident that the market will understand us based on the steps that is being taken by the present management. Hopefully, in the months and years to come, the market uh, will take a cue and will respond. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximum Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and thanks for taking my questions. Uh, sir, first question is on the loan book growth. So I think our earlier guidance for FI23 uh, by you was 13,000 crores. And now, you know, uh, we have, so th that was around a 10% sort of an increase versus that in nine months, we have only been able to reach like 2-3% from March. So do we still gui uh, stand by our guidance of 13,000 crore? And uh, what are the key reasons? Sir? Of course, we can understand BT out, but uh, you know BT out had become less of a problem in the previous quarters. It seemed like we had arrested that problem, and now it seems that uh, you know it has again become a problem for us. So, given that sort of a constant uh, sort of a threat of customers moving out, how do we, you know, even um, plan to sort of grow the AUM by 15 odd percent in next year? So if you can throw some light on these matters, sir. See, the current year, let me be very clear, sir. Even though we said 13,000 crores, our intention was 15,000 crores may be difficult. Uh, let me be very frank. It may be difficult. But this fourth quarter will be an important quarter for us. Uh, we plan to do not less than around 800 crores of disbursement this quarter. This is a, that is the minimum. That to an organic uh, disbursement of around 800 crores. Based on that, we expect the book to move around 12,500 to 12,600 crores. Let me be very clear. But as far as next year is concerned, now that the new IT platform is there, <coughs> we are confident that we will be able to do better both digitally as well as organically. See, in organization also, we may be doing some changes. Maybe some of the resources may be given exclusively for uh, sales, mobilization, and all that. And now that I am one year old experience in this particular industry and the company, uh, we are fairly, fairly confident that we will be able to have the uh, growth that we said. Maybe 15% growth, I think, in the industry, that too in a favorable environment that is there in the uh, whole economy, we are confident that we will be able to have this 15% growth. Uh, we are pretty confident, let me be very clear. This particular quarter, maybe, <coughs> maybe we may not be able to reach 13,000 crores, let me be but definitely 12,500 to 12,600 is a possibility. Yeah, and can you explain, sir, BT out? Because, you know, in the previous quarters, it looked like it has become less of a problem. And now it seems that, again, you know, that problem has become for us because, you know, as someone also alluded to, that disbursement growth is very strong. But despite that, our AUM has not uh, meaningfully increased. Okay. 
see, BP wrote actually has, <coughs> it's not all that much. The last quarter, that is the September, October to December quarter, our problem was somewhere because of uh, the CLS subsidy. CLS subsidy of around 40 to 50 crores came during last quarter. But How much? Say that the same problem is prevailing this quarter as well. So the BT out is uh, maybe it should be less. I, I do not have the numbers exactly now. So I will give you the number during the course of this. But definitely BT out has, uh, is under control. And as I told in the previous uh, the previous uh, questioner, see some BTOs is inevitable for this company. Let us be very clear because at the three percent uh, uh, spread, and I am competing with the best in the industry as well as the banks who are also in the same bracket. So some BTO is inevitable. Notwithstanding the BTOs, this can be managed if our disbursement uh, increase uh, to a larger extent. That we are trying. Definitely in the coming quarters and coming year, definitely this will happen. That will more than offset the expected BTOs. Understood. The second point where we have suffered this year majorly is cost to income, sir, where both your employee cost and OPEX is increasing at a disproportionate pace vis-a-vis uh, -vis vis -vis your loan book growth, which is very, very small, like 2-3% growth versus 20-30-40% growth. So how do you sort of think about this problem wherein, uh, you know, ideally you should bring it down, but instead of that, it's actually inching up? Uh, thanks, Amish, for bringing all this. See, let us first uh, understand. See, as far as the base effect is concerned, there were COVID-related issues in the previous year. Okay, so some of the costs like traveling and all that were not there in the previous year, whereas this year, this has increased and we are uh, moving people out, not only for business, but also for recovery. That is one. We also analyze what are the areas where our costs have gone up. One such thing is on sales. See, for example, DSC business has improved. That is the cost. So DSC increase is one issue. We also done a branding exercise, especially in the south, if you see, more branding exercise is there. So we are expecting a better businesses in the years to come, second. Third one on recovery. So let me say, Nearly some 2,500 notices have been issued in the last nine months itself. So there is a legal curse that has increased quarter uh, compared to the previous year, at least 200 to 300 percent increase in the legal cost. See, all these are inevitable. We are trying to control our NPS to the maximum, trying to bring down the NPS to the maximum, so such things are unavoidable. As far as employee cost is concerned, employee cost also includes the incentives that we are paying to our people. See, the incentives we are paying only because of which the book is also growing, which are not there earlier. So we are incentivizing our staff, so the book is growing. So these are all uh, areas which will have a result over a period. Maybe for the current year it may be more, but definitely the company will reap the benefits over a period, and I'm confident that these things will happen. And for the current quarter, that is this October to December quarter, there were some small issues like central payments and all. See, I was telling you, IT platform got implemented in the last, started implementing in the last quarter. So we had to make some small payments to the uh, consultants, IT consultants, sitting agencies and all that. So these are some one-time uh, expenses. We could have capitalized, uh, but we prefer to take it over the then. So these are some one-time costs. So these things may not be there in the next year. So the cost to thing is under control. For your information, we are also having a specific budget under each and every head. Each and every department is supposed to get clearance before spending. So we are having a tight leash on the cost. Hopefully, when the numbers start increasing, this cost to income ratio percentage also will come down. That much we are confident. And on the NPA side, sir, I think there we have been able to achieve the guidance. I think we had guided for 700 odd crores and we are at 750 odd crores right now. So, I mean, NPA any, any thoughts on how these things, of course, Q4, I am sure, sure that you would be able to sort of bring it down to the guidance number. But beyond that, next year, how are we looking at the gross NPA profile that we have? Do we expect a significant uh, lowering or are there some chunky NPAs out there? So, you know, how are we looking at our NPA profile and recoveries? See, on the NPA front, as you have yourself said, thank you for that. Uh, we are doing very well. Definitely, I, we are confident that we will be able to reach the uh, number of 700 for this quarter. And uh, NPA percentage is below 6%, around 5.5.6. 5, 5, 5. 
that is possible. As far as next year is concerned, this same fight against NPA will, uh, will start increasing. Uh, we will see to it the percentage goes below 4% or something by March 20, 2024. We are pretty confident. See, please also understand that this particular year, in addition to our existing NPA stock, we also had a problem of uh, this framework of calls getting added. Nearly some 700 and odd crores got added during this current year. Despite that, we were able to bring down the NPA numbers as well as the NPA percentage. That is a, we feel that is a good achievement as far as this company is concerned on the NPA front. Going forward, we do not have a fear or the sword that is hanging overhead in the form of a framework accounts. Framework accounts are being monitored almost on a weekly basis by the entire top management. Yes, there may be overdues in the framework accounts, but the payments are coming. Slowly, the NPA numbers under the framework is coming down, as well as the overdues and numbers are also coming down. So, in the next year, definitely the NPA percentage as well as the quantum will definitely be very much within manageable levels and in line with our peers. Thank you. Mr. Gupta, we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Next question comes from the line of Amish Thakkar from Secular Guff India Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Um, so I just want to talk about uh, AUM growth. Uh, in your investor presentation, you uh, mentioned that uh, you've not acquired any uh, loan pools uh, during the quarter. So. Is there a strategy to do that going forward, given that uh, BT out is going to uh, be a problem in a competitive industry? So uh, how do we think about acquiring uh, loan pools from other players? Yeah, it's a commercial call. We will take uh, if uh, rates and the quantum and all are full set, we will take a call. We have not clearly decided whether we should go ahead or not. If opportunities are there and if rates are favorable, definitely we will have a view. Okay, but there's no guidance in terms of, you know, is there, uh, there's no... Uh, I don't guidance. want to give a wrong guidance. Definitely based on commercials, we will take a call. Okay. And in terms of GNPA, sir, uh, for the quarter, uh, what are the fresh slippages and uh, recovery for the quarter? Uh, for the quarter, the slippage was around 88 crores, and we had recovered 124 crores. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Panti Chavla from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving the opportunity. Uh, if you can share the restructured assets number, because it is not visible in the presentation, if it is any outstanding standard restructured assets, and also how they are performing is the moratorium over for all the borrowers. Okay. See, as of now, there is nothing like a restructure because all these restructures have also been factored. Either they have been declared as NPA or under overview. We do not have any more restructured assets in our book, technically speaking. So the restructured assets, that is those assets which have not been uh, taken as either NPA or not. As of December quarter, the total book is around 645 crores of which NPA is around 190 crores uh, in the research portfolio. In fact, the NPAs have come down compared to the previous quarter, and there has been an improvement also in the total uh, research book compared to the previous quarter. Okay. And sir, if you can share uh, stage one and stage two number, you have given the joint grace, gross stage one and gross stage two number. Stage one, I do not have. Stage two, uh, there has come down around, five, uh, around 100 crores. See, we were around 1,600 crores in the previous quarter. Now the number should be around 1,500 crores. Okay, okay. And sir, can you share the uh, your outlook on the net interest margin as the cost of funds seems to be rising every quarter? I think we will be able to maintain our uh, gauges. 4 .5. <laughs> So definitely, we will be able to maintain that. Uh, and sir, lastly, uh, in the presentation slide 15, you have shared the movement in the borrowing cost. Uh, sir, it says that weighted average borrowing rate has increased from 7.2 to 7.7 percent from September to December. But if I see the cost of borrowing made during, 
so my sense is that incremental credit cost or incremental cost of borrowing which we are which we are doing is has not much changed from 7.2 to just 7.3 so how come the movement in the weighted average has increased by 40 50 bips kind of a thing any specific reason behind that I don't have the calculation, but, but as you will uh, see that during the current quarter, we have the bank in, increase the NCLR. See, most of our borrowings are NCLR based. I don't have the exact numbers under the calculation and all. But during the current quarter, because of the NCLR increase of various banks, our cost of uh, borrowing did go up, and we were able to pass on most of the cost of borrowings. And as I told in the previous conference call also, see, we reset our interest rates every six months uh, as far as the a uh, bulk of the assets around 40000 and our accounts we reset all other assets we are resetting every 6 months so definitely all this increase in uh, cost of borrowing will get repaid in from in our advanced portfolio in the coming months so the, so the cost increase of this current quarter will get repaid in our book in the coming quarter is in full okay thank you thank you very much sir thank you Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Sanket Chera from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, my question was again on disbursements. Uh, uh, that one reason that you mentioned the uh, uh, subsidy that you have received and is that amount. So if you can repeat that. And uh, uh, what were the other reasons uh, for for uh, disbursement to be uh, slightly lower this quarter? Because as far as I see total drawdowns have not changed, so maybe com- uh, narrative to competition is not true. Last three quarters, uh, total drawdown has been around 550 crores versus 630 crores in Q4. So it, it is it is mainly because disbursements have slowed down sequentially. So what what led to that uh, other than the subsidy and the technology uh, uh, integration that we were doing, and how do we see it in coming quarters? Actually, the subsidy was not a factor as far as disbursement is concerned. Subsidy is a factor for our AUM. Okay. Yeah, That's sir. So I am saying AUM growth is lower. So one reason was subsidy uh, that you have received. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, disbursement growth. I will not say that it was bad. See, see, this fifty crores or something that I am talking as far as this IT replacement is concerned. Okay, it's mm-hmm. just a thing. At least around ten years, there were some disruptions. I think we will admit that. A company with a 20-year legacy uh, system. Slowly, when we are moving to a new system overnight, there will be some disruptions because we need to train our staff, we need to train our entire uh, systems, all people, and there will be some problems when uh, systems get moved and all that. Because of that, there are some disruptions. Uh, other than that, I don't find any reason. <coughs> Definitely, we should have done something around the 750 at least, 700 to 750. This could be one of the reasons. But as I said, this third quarter is a relatively weak quarter for the company. Also, I was telling you, you know, see, for the last six or seven years, I have data, except for one year. In all other years, despite our IT issue, this particular quarter, this was under 696 crores, is the highest. Okay. Okay. So that's not a big issue as far as uh, we are concerned. And, uh... the one of problems that you are saying sir so i i suppose uh, it would be baked in when you are guiding now from here on uh, for for uh, not just next quarter but uh, for for say fy24 as a whole uh, where you are guiding 15% so uh, this this uh, one of things would be baked in right in your estimate while uh, guiding it yes sir sir you were correct you said So definitely, this IT platform change will be definitely game changer in our disbursement in the coming years. And the first year, we see, for example, mobile applications, various other additional add-on applications can will be possible. So the company will definitely benefit because of these things. That's why I'm saying for the next year onwards, this may be a one-off issue, but next year onwards, definitely, the company will be benefiting both in AEM growth as well as in disbursement. Okay. And so on margins, uh, I didn't get to you clearly. Uh, we we are currently doing about 4.8 cents uh, to three quarters. You mean it would stay here, or maybe a marginal moderation around four four and a half is what you were guiding? 
in terms of margin? Yeah, yeah. Now we are around 4.8, and we had waited around 4.3. Definitely, we will be around 4.5. Definitely, there will not be a big margin as far as margin is concerned. Sure, sir. Uh, yeah, those were the only questions from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question comes on the line of Uday Pai from Investec. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity. I just missed on the uh, subsidy number. So can you please repeat the subsidy number that you are receiving? Subsidy amount was around 40 crores last quarter. This okay. quarter also we have received some 50 crores so far. 50 crores, right? Yeah, this quarter, that is January to March quarter. This fourth quarter also we have already received around 50 crores. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Let's from it. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Praveen Kumar from Aquitas Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hello. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, in your uh, 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 data on the mix of the loan portfolio, we observed that uh, the proportion of loan against property has gone up uh, from 18.8% uh, last year to about 20% this year. So uh, my question was, do you expect, I mean, given your guidance of strong growth for next year, do you expect this proportion of loan against property to grow further uh, uh, from, from this point onwards, given that your uh, asset quality experience in that segment hasn't been so good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Praveen. See, we said, uh, as far as our internal budgeting is concerned, we can go up to 25% as far as property is concerned. Mm -hmm. We are 20.1% as of now. And let me also make it clear, just because we are moving slightly higher in the loan against portfolio, there will not be any compromise as far as the quality of assets are concerned. See, even for a loan against property, we will see the civil scope, we will see the repayment possibilities. All other issues will be taken into consideration before giving, sanctioning a loan against property. Even loan against property, the quantum is also determined. We do not just like the give the 10 crores, 20 crores, and all around the thing. So the quality as well as quantity are being checked. Then only is being given. And even in interest rates, just because it is loan against property, I cannot charge anything extra, extraordinary high interest rate that is not possible also, because the market will not take it. So all said and done, even against loan against property, though it may be slightly higher than the salary segment or the standard segment, it is not that the loan against property, there will be a compromise on quality. Maybe there is some cost of utilization happening, because as far as the loan, uh, housing loan portfolio is concerned, we are moving more and more to the best quality portfolio. So there will be some cross subsidization that we are going in the loan against property portfolio. But let me make it very clear, even in the loan against property portfolio, we will not be going beyond 25% any cost. Uh, thank you. That's good to know. But uh, could you specifically talk about, you know, compared to the previous credit cycle when, when, you, when the company suffered from uh, higher uh, delinquencies in the loan against property segment, what what are the things? What is what are the underwriting differences that you are employing this time around to kind of avoid that? See, all the risks that we had encountered law previous things have all been factored in our uh, new platform as well. Based on the quality of customer uh, type of customer we take in, it's not that all customers are being taken out. The civil score, the interest rate. See, just because it is a loan against property, uh, just because loan we will not pay the average ticket size. See, for example. Even in uh, even though we have increased our uh, loan against portfolio, our average ticket size remains same. So that's what I was saying. See, even in the lab port portfolio, we are having a tight leash on the quality of the customers before uh, agreeing for that. And to for just for information, the third quarter, that is the third quarter, there is not even one proposal which is entered into the board board level. Thing. The board is about about three crores. So we have not taken even one proposal to the board which means that the bottom of uh, the such portfolios uh, is also being monitored. So uh, I will make it clear that, yes, there is a slight increase in the uh, lab portfolio compared to the previous quarter. But uh, let us make it very clear that quality is not at all compromised. I do not want to talk on the past, what happened in the past and all that. 
But present management is very clear on the quality of such portfolios. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Amit Mahantali from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. Sir, I would like to discuss about BT out uh, again. Uh, see, typically a lot of times, uh, I'm audible? Yeah, yeah, very okay. good. Okay, great, thanks. See, typically a lot of times, uh, you know, a large portion of BT out, you know, could be, I mean, several reasons, but, uh, you know, it could also be due to data, you know, where our loan book data is compromised or leaked to outsiders, and the competitors may be calling our customers and pitching, you know, with a lower rate. So that is one possibility. The other possibility could also be, uh, you know, DSAs or employee incentive policy may be such that minimum holding period is not there or the minimum holding period is lower. So DSA may give a kind of a, uh, you know, uh, file and then once the incentive is paid out, the same loan book will move out after a year or so. So then the DSA makes money and the file goes from one NBFC to another every year. Uh, so, I mean, some of these things have been prevalent in the market for, you know, uh, you know, in the past. I would just like to know your views, uh, you know, on this uh, for Repco in particular. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. See, some of the things are there. See, some, uh, these are all some environmental issues. We are correct, like you know, the, your uh, views on this DSA takeout. Uh, I think as an organization, we cannot prevent such things uh, because it is his uh, commercial call he is taking, he or she is taking, so that we cannot do. But we are trying to prevent, as far as interests are concerned, we are now somewhat agreeable for any interest rate reduction as long as the customer is good. We see the civil score and all that. We have our own parameters. If a particular customer fits within our parameters, we do not mind reducing our interest rate so that the customer doesn't go. That is one issue. Then we are also, some of the customers move out for some top of products. We are also giving some top ups for our existing customers so that they do not move out. All these are there, and we, for our exceptionally good quality customers, we are also offering interest rates even below our MLA. So with all these, we are trying to retain our customers the best. But as I was telling you, some BTs, BTOs are not totally uh, possible. Some will have, will have to happen. Maybe because of some other reasons. Maybe the same property, he will use it for his other uh, requirement, other business requirement. Such things may be there. Uh, some of the banks, with uh, some lower costs, they may be able to entice this customer. So such things are there. But despite that, I am glad to say that this BT house are under control. We are monitoring it. As I was telling, we have uh, got a product. Of course, with some cost, we have got a product. Whereby we know the customers who have a tendency who are likely to move out and all that. So we ask our people to talk to such customers to see whether it is possible we can retain and all that. So we are taking our own steps. Great, sir. My just humble suggestion is that we look at our internal data. We may find some interesting data points on you know how the files are moving out and then may allow us to take action around that. Uh, thanks for your comments. That's it for me. Thanks, sir. We are monitoring that. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximum Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking the follow-up, sir. I just wanted to understand this, um, you know, the new IT system that you had uh, mentioned about. How will that sort of help you gain higher disbursement and, uh, you know, what sort of disbursements are we looking for this quarter or is this IT system not yet implemented for this quarter or will it be implemented for for the next quarter? See, the new IT system, I don't want to name the vendor and all that. The new IT system is Oracle based, okay. Compared to the previous one, it is one. Second one, as far as this quarter is concerned, there may be some disruptions which will continue. See, last quarter we introduced the system. In December, we want to be introduced the system for all new sites. From the current month onwards, that is from February onwards, our existing, uh, from the leg existing accounts from the legacy system has also moved in. That is, the migration has taken place in full. So, as far as this quarter is concerned, there might be some disruptions because of this IT system. But next year onwards, because of the new platform, we are tra trying to use this uh, platform for moving out to MERS, moving out to end-to-end uh, -end digitalization, a mobile banking uh, app which will facilitate the customer to log in from his place itself 
or DSC for facilitating our DSAs to log in the details from his place of work. So that paperwork will be less, no uh, uh, movement will take place digitally. These are all our plans. So we will be competing with the best in the IT system uh, in the coming years. That is our plan. We just we hope to increase our numbers as well. Understood. And sir, on the BT out, uh, so are there any uh, terms and conditions which we normally put for our loan customers because of which it creates sort, some sort of frictional cost for them to move out? Or is it like, uh, you know, for the customer who wants to move out, there is no other uh, sort of fees or uh, any uh, penalty that they have to pay? No. Uh, thanks, Arvish. See, as of now, because of our regulatory agents, we cannot charge any customer for moving out. Okay. This prepayment penalty is not available at all. And as our terms and conditions are concerned, it is lying with the industry. We, cannot, we are not stipulating any term which is at variance with our industry practices. But people move out mainly because of commercial considerations. See, once he comes to, when he comes to our particular uh, uh, company, the, his civil score may be uh, minus one or maybe even less than 750 and all that. But based on his payment track record, his civil score will definitely move out. So based on the new civil score, he gets a better rate for the organized institutions, including banks and all of that. So that is the main reason why people move out. The two things we are in the competitive, uh, competitive environment with a spread of nearly 3%. So we are not in a market where competition is less. We are in a market where we are competing with the best. So that is one of the major reasons why people move out. Understood, sir. Sir, on the board level changes, we have seen uh, quite a lot of changes in the past. So, um, is it all done or, uh, or uh, you know, there's something left there or what's happening if you can throw some more light on that? Board level changes are all over, sir. We now have a 12% board in our uh, thing. Our uh, promoters, they have five people. Independent directors are six in our board. See, we have uh, eminent personalities, including uh, MDs of uh, housing, retired MDs of uh, housing finance companies, retired executive, senior executives from banks, private financial institutions. All people are there in our board, and uh, the board is giving me good guidance to the person management on how to go about and all that. And uh, we benefit a lot from other board's proposition. Understood, sir. All the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Himanshu Taluja from Aditya Birla Sun Life AMC Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Most of the questions has been answered. Just few ones from my end. Sir, on this new uh, tech platform which you have installed, uh, what was the total approximate cost of this and how one should see the PNL impact uh, 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 um, of this basically cost? If you can uh, throw some light on this, how so? One should look at your other OPEX basically in the near term. Second is, uh, uh, yeah, probably if you can answer this problem, I can answer the second one. Okay. See, the so total cost we estimate is around 50 crores, including the security cost, IT security cost. The largest cost is around 40 crores, and the 10 crores is a uh, security cost. Okay, that is under implementation. Around 20 or not crores we have already spent that has been capitalized. Okay, uh, I, think the, I think that answers your uh, question right. Sorry? See, total cost is 50 crores, including a security uh, related cost of 10 crores. Okay. So, 40 crores is the bare cost for the product. It is still okay. under implementation, payments are ma being made in stages. Okay. So, far, we would have paid to the vendor around 20 and crores. Okay. So, we have taken the PL impact of 28 crores, if I understood correctly. Sir, so, sorry, your voice is not audible. I can't hear you. Sir, this 20 and dollar cost is already capitalized. Okay. This PNL, the PNL cost is, see, there are some consultants in the entire process. Mm -hmm. Some of which could not be, uh, some of which we have not capitalized. Some of the payments to these uh, consultants or the testing agencies and all, we had not capitalized. The payments which we made during the last quarter, we had not capitalized. It is not that the capital uh, expenditure has not been done. Okay, got it. So, second question is on uh, on the asset quality front. Uh, 
uh, on the current stress pool that you, how one should ex expect the recovery on this stress pool and uh, secondly your provision coverage you have improved to from last year 30 to 46 percent at what level you wanted to or what is your endeavor to keep the provision coverage on your stage 3 yeah, assets so one should let me assure you because in our view, the worst is over as far as the slippages are concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the provision coverage issue, we don't have a specific target number. Uh, we are adequate, uh, we have got adequate provisions. It, I think, as I said, I think people should be happy that we have a better provision coverage ratio. Because this is a, a buffer that we have for any future eventualities. Okay. Okay. So from the next year, see, once uh, uh, now we have the normalized slippages and your uh, provision coverage is also adequate on the current stress so one should expect a normalized credit cost going ahead definitely definitely sir. definitely that is our expectation sure sir thanks thank you next question comes from the line of rajiv mehta please go ahead Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sir, uh, a couple of questions uh, from my side. Firstly, you wanted to get some uh, texture on the disbursement. Uh, so, uh, can you give us uh, some some uh, favor in terms of what is the average CB score of the new accounts being onboarded? Uh, what is the has there been any shift in ticket size incrementally from what it was at the portfolio level? Uh, are, is there any change in property profile being funded now? And lastly, what has been the changes in the sourcing mix? Uh, so you can just answer the profile of new business in these three, four dimensions. So as far as sourcing is concerned, there is a slight change. The DSA percentage might have gone up from around 20 to 12%. Now it may be around 25%. I don't have the exact number now. Maybe I can give you a sign. Uh, mm -hmm. The DSA, that is sourcing through your DSA, would have gone up, uh, total of percentage would have gone up to around 25% overall. As far as ticket size is concerned, there is not much change quarter on quarter. But year on year, there is a change. See, quarter on quarter, 18.5% mm -hmm. was the ticket size. This, uh, this, uh, December quarter, it's 18.4. Yeah. Sorry, 18.4 lakhs. Year on year, it was earlier 15.3. That is for the quarter, I am saying. And now it is 18.4. So some 3 lakhs increase is there in the per ticket size. Okay. This is for the quarter. Company as a whole, there is not too much change. Company as a whole, it is 14.9, is the total. For the incremental portion, it is 18.4. 18.4. Company as a whole, the average ticket is 14.9, as against 14.6 in the uh, year on year. Hmm. Hmm. And uh, about the credit profile of customers in terms of euro score? I think you would have seen in our presentation, we, as far as the home loan is concerned, we are moving slightly in favor of salary class. Salary class is slowly improving compared to the non salary class. And the civil score, the civil score, uh, the, uh, civil score is uh, now improved. It is average 715, 740. 740 now. Incremental. The incremental civil score is 740 now. Okay. So, so to that extent, our future is safe. Mm -hmm. And in terms of property profile and underwriting, uh, there is no change in policy, right? No, there is no change. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Rupen Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, can I have a provision figure on our stage two? Hello? What is that room for? Provision figure. Provision figure on stage two assets. Provision on stage two only. We have 130 crores, sir. 130 crores. And how do you see this stage two moving forward now, for, now onwards? Stage 2 is under control. In fact, it is coming down slowly. I okay. I expect the stage 2 to come down below 10% of our income. That is our okay. Because compared to, you know, because compared to rest of the housing finance company, our stage 2 are uh, way, way uh, ahead of those companies. Uh, 
the your competitors are uh, quoting 2% uh, gross to and 3% and we are having a uh, 10 12% uh, gross and uh, stage 2 i see not here to compete uh, on the comment on the competitors but as far as we are concerned uh, yes definitely we are uh, uh, closely monitoring our overview uh, portfolio all the okay. are being monitored almost on a daily basis okay is to bring it down to below 10% even by the end of this current financial year going forward so, it will be in line with the industry that is for sure okay. so now uh, my only worry is now slippage is from stage 2 to stage 3 uh, are there any danger of the, we are not being able to uh, achieve what we achieve want to achieve for fy24 Uh, nothing of this, sir. You can have some confidence in the present management. Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> he has been been invested from five past last five years, and uh, actually the performance from last five years okay, there was a COVID, but the performance of the management is not up to the mark, you know, uh, compared to the competitors. That's why the question. That's it. So. I do not want to comment on the past, sir. As far as the present management is concerned, the entire management, entire field, everybody is geared up as far as the overview book is concerned. Okay. okay. So some, Thank you. Some movement from stage two to stage three may be inevitable, but there will mm-hmm. be a higher number from stage two to stage one. I can give you okay. that assurance. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. due to time constraints we have reached the end of question and answer session i would now like to hand the conference over to mr rajiv mehta for closing comments oh yeah uh, thank you everyone for joining thank you uh, to the management of repco for giving us this opportunity and sir would you like to make any closing remarks uh, before we end it uh, thanks rajiv uh, thanks all the people who have come to this conference call very much thankful for all the questions raised from mr the questions i would like to give from the present management the entire present management as well as the entire field staff everybody is aware is geared up and whatever guidance we have given we will we are striving our heart uh, to to achieve all the numbers okay thank you very much thank you for the opportunity thank you thank you so much sir on behalf of yes securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines thank you thank you